So your topic of discussion today, plant growth regulators, plant growth regulators. And it's used in fruit production. Plant growth regulators and it's used in food production. Now, what is growth regulators? You let me give an example. You see, when you grow a plant inside, but that terminal portion has a tendency to go outside, isn't it? Some plant like tobacco, when you grow it, then a terminal plant will continue to grow. Unless you remove the tip, there will be no lateral water development. That means some substance are produced naturally in the plant body, which promote or inhibit or any physiological processes in the plant body. Okay? The substance which are produced naturally in the plant body is called hormone. Substance which are produced, it is a organic substance. The organic substance which are produced naturally in the plant body is called hormone. The word hormone, H O R O M E, any, hormone. It is a Greek word derived from derived from hormau, H O R M A U, M A O. Hormau, S O R M A O, hormau means to stimulate. Okay? Hormau, the word hormone derives, it is a Greek word, derives from hormau, S O R M A O, which means to stimulate. Now, some the plant growth regulators are, are also similar to hormone. Write down. Plant growth regulators are also similar to hormone, but they are synthetic in nature. But they are synthetic in nature. One is naturally produced, another is synthetically hormone, synthetically produced. Now, overall, the definition of plant growth regulators are the organic substances which is produced necessarily in the plant body promote, inhibit and modify the physiological process in the plant. Promote, inhibit and physiological process in the body, in the plant. Physiological process. When it is used in a small concentration, that means it is an organic substance which promote, inhibit or modify the physiological process in the plant when it is used in small concentration. Okay? Their site of production differ from site of action. All hormones are growth regulators, but all growth regulators are not hormone. So the substance which produced make the plant epical dominance. You know the definition of epical dominance? It is a continuous elongation of terminal portion, keeping the lateral bed suppressed. Okay? That substance is called Indolacetic acid. Unless you remove the tip, there will be no developmental lateral bud development. As a phototropism, thus phenomena where the plant, when you keep the plant inside, the terminal person has a tendency to go towards outside. Light, that means towards light. That phenomena is called phototropism. That is also a good example how necessarily organic the hormones are produced in the plant body. The example is apical dominance and phototropism. Right now, it is a good example. Good example of naturally produced hormones is apical dominance and phototropism. They are specific in action. Their action is, action of the plant growth regulator is specific. So there are two groups of plant growth regulators. One is growth promoters, the chemicals which promote the growth and development of plant. Write down. There are two groups of plant growth regulators. One is 
the chemicals which promote the plant developments. Second group, the chemicals which suppress or retard the plant growth and development. First is which promote the growth, development. And second is the chemical which suppress or retard the growth and development. Okay? Now, <coughs> this promote, promotion of growth occurs through cell division and cell elongation. Okay? The substance which promote the growth, it is through cell elongation and cell division. So the some naturally naturally produces indole acetic acid. It is full name is indole acetic acid. I told you the plan which has a tendency to go continuous to grow, that is apical dominance, that substance, the natural, that hormone is called indole acetic acid. Then similarly, some other growth regulators containing auxin like IBA, indole butyric acid, NAA, naphthalene acetic acid. Let me write the full meaning of the IBA, indole butyric. B U T Y R I C. Mind that B U T R T Y R I C. Indole butyric acid. N A A. Naphthalene acetic acid. Nap N A P S. Naphthalene acetic acid. Then you might have heard another growth regular which is called zivarelin. In short form, it is written as GA, GA3. It is gibberellic acid. GI double B, RE double I, ACID. Gibberellic acid. These are the hormones or growth regulators which promote the plant development. Okay? And there are some other substances which retard and are, or inhibit the growth, like Malic hydrazide, M is malic, M A L I C, malic hydrazide. Then cycosel, phosphon D, MO1618. These are the chemicals growth regulator which suppress or retard the growth. You see the medical fluid. Medical, when you see if it is sufficient vegetative growth, there will be more number of leaves but less number of flowers. Because of continuous cell elongation of the apical medicine, so there will be only vegetative growth. But if you spray some retardants, then it, the growth will be dwarfed and no number of flowers will be formed. Okay? That is a good example. Now, let me give you one example. You see the potato plant. Potato plant. There is a formation of tubers. Leaves. Okay? Because why there is potato from the tubers, not by other plants? The reason is that the rate of photosynthesis by the potato is more than 20 times than that of other plants. Other plants also green, having chlorophyll, isn't it? But the rate of photosynthesis is 20 times, more than 20 times in respect of potato. Because of which the sufficient accumulate, photosynthesis accumulate in the leaves that goes down to the root system and form in form, store in form of tubers. Okay? Now, in case of the potato, in case of a normal plant, when the epic is removed, this epic portion is removed, there will be no formation of tubers. When you remove the epic, there will be no formation of tubers. Okay? But if you apply the auxin plus zivarelin to the tip portion, then it will go down and form the tubers. That means some substances are produced in the tip of the plant, which goes down 
in a bicipital direction to the root system and it accumulates in form of tubers. Okay? And helps in the formation of tubers. Conversely, if you remove the roots, root tips, then, then also there will be no formation of tubers. Only the, the portion which bear the tuber, it is called stolon. Okay? Stolon. And this is tubers. If they remove the root tip, then also there will be no formation of tubers. That means some substances are produced in the epic of the stem, and some substances are produced in the root tip of the stem, root tip, and interaction of which it will help in the formation of tubers. That's a very good example. Would you follow? That means in the formation of tubers, particularly potato plant, when you remove the epic, then there will be no formation of tubers. That means some substances are produced in the tip, that is auxin and gibberellin, which goes down to the root system and it accumulates in form of tubers. And conversely, if the tip of the root also removed, then also there will be no root formation, there will be no tuber formation, only the stolon develop. Stolon means that part which bears the tubers. So this indicates there are some substances are produced in the plant body, interaction of which it helps in formation of tubers. Would you follow that? Would you follow? So this is an example. Now, <coughs> that means now it, it proves that the oxygen produced in the epic and the root tip. Cytokinin produced in the root tip. Zibarling produced in the young, love, young leaves. So you can write down those things. Okay? Then oxygen produced in the shoot tip as well as root tip. And cytokinin produced in the root tip. And zibarylin produced in the cytokinin produced in the root tip. And zibarylin produced in the young leaves. So interaction of all these compounds, okay, it helps in the formation of tubers. That's a good example. Even in case of apical lobinum also, if you remove the tip, then substance which is produced in the apical portion, it goes down to the lateral part, that is lateral buds, and helps in formation of bud development. So that indicates some substance are produced. Now let me tell you the hormones are naturally produced organic substances which promote inhibitor physiology, uh, modify the physiological process in the plant. But plant growth regulators are also similar into the hormone action, but they are synthetic in nature. They are artificially manufactured. Okay? But the site of production of hormones differ from site of action. It is a good example, isn't it? And they move from one part of the plant to the other part in a bicipital direction, B S I P T A L, bicipital direction. They move like a bicipital direction. And finally, their action is specific. If you apply, you do not the proper dose, then it may create gross morphological abnormalities. Okay? So that's why their concentration and composition are specific and it varies from place to plant. You can write down. Their composition and concentration are varies to the plant to plant. That means they are specific in action. Mm -hmm. So I told you all hormones are growth regulators but all growth regulators are not hormones. And growth regulators are man-made phytohormones. Phyto means plant, okay? Growth regulators are right now. Man, uh, growth regulators are man-made. It is artificially made, man-made. Man-made phytohormone. Phyto means plant.
then actually again I told you there are two groups of plant growth regulator one is which promote the plant development second which retard and suppress the growth and development this promotion occurs through cell division and cell elongation okay so an example of the growth regulators which promotes like indole acetic acid indole butyric acid naphthalene acetic acid and zebralic acid okay then the regarding the chemical which suppress or retard the growth like malic hydrazide then cyclocell phosphondi mo1618 okay now <coughs> What are the different types of plant growth regulator? Different groups or plant growth regulator it is written as PGR. PGR means plant growth regulators. So first is auxin. Second is zebralin. You see the spelling. Z I double B I E R E double L I N. Zebralin. Then cytokinin, cytokinin, then ethylene, then abscisic acid, A, B, S, C, I, S, I, C, you see the spelling, A, B, S, C, I, S, I, C, abscisic acid, which is written in form, short form A, B, A. You see that during winter, leaves are drop, isn't it? Leaves are drop of what? To prevent the evaporation loss, transpiration loss. Okay? So the growth regulators which is involved in the leaf fall or abscisson is the abscessic acid. Okay? Now, these are the different group of plant growth regulators. Now, what is the practical use? This plan go regular for production. Number one, <coughs> what is the practical use? Rule of PGR in food production. Number one, propagation of plan. Propagation of plan. Number two, Control of flowering. Number three, fruit setting and parthenocarpy. Parthenocarpy. Number four, control of pre harvest food drop. Pre harvest food drop. And number four, flower thinning. Flower thinning. And number six, weed control. These are the areas where plant growth regulators use in food production. One is propagation of plant. Second is control of flowering. Third is food setting and parthenocarpy. Fourth is control of pre-harvest food drop. Next, flower thinning and then weight control. Flower thinning, PSI double N ING, flower thinning. Let me discuss one by one. In respect of propagation of plant, you might have seen in the nursery or even in your home also, sometimes the plant is propagated through cutting, isn't it? So bougainvillea, china rose, like that, mayflower. It is propagated through cutting. Because these cuttings give roots. Why? There are some photosynthetic produced in the leaves, which along with the organic substances, it comes down to the cutting portion, where it accumulates with oxygen, and it promotes formational roots. That is the science, OK? When you go for cutting, and if you put it in the bed, then it gives rooting and sprouting, no doubt, in time. But if you apply the plant growth regulator outside externally, then it gives rooting and sprouting very quickly. 
Would you follow? That's why nursery plan, they used to take the some help of the plant door regulators because they are having the commercial interest. So as to produce more number of plants and to sell it and to get it rupees. Is that it? So this is the first aspect in food production. It is propagation of plant. Okay? That is through propagation of plants through cuttings. You can write down the when the plants are propagated through cutting, when plants are propagated through cutting, then use of plant goal regulators like IBA, NAA, 24D is a common practice. When you go for cutting, then use of plant goal regulators like IBA, I told you it is indolbitric acid, which is most commonly used. Okay, then also use NA also to some extent and 24D. 24D means 24 dichlorophenoxy acetic acid. That is also used. But most common one is indolbutyric acid. The science is that what the whatever the Suppose this is a cutting, <coughs> this cutting lower portion is made a slanting manner and this is a round manner, round and it is always above the bud, it is just below the bud, cuttings are made. That is of the plant which are one and one and half years old. Suppose you are going for Nemu, so it is, it you cannot go for tender cutting, it should be one and one and half year old, okay. That also 20 to 25 centimeter leg. So while you go for cutting, it should be during the commencement of the spring season, so that there will be rapid rate of cell division. Okay, you cannot go for cutting now. Now it is the winter season, so the plants remain are dormant. Okay, so when there will be rapid cell division at the time of spring season, that time is suitable for cutting. Okay, so that time when you cut the cuttings, then these cuttings, some substance are accumulated in the leaves. No doubt this will give rooting. This will give roots in when you put in the bed. And this will also sprout. That is because of whatever the photosynthesis produced in the top along with the organic substance. It comes down. It goes down to the system, portion where it is cut. Then it along with the oxygen, it creates an optimum condition and finally gives rooting and sprouting. So it may take 7 to 10 days, even 15 days also. But if you apply externally some growth regulators, it creates the optimum condition very quickly and gives rooting and sprouting. So that is why the Paris, uh, this, uh, this, uh, nursery men use this practice so that they can produce more number of plants at a shorter time and can, they can sell it and earn it. So IBA is most commonly used in propagation of plant by cutting. That cutting also will be different type. Depending upon the, some are herbaceous cutting, some are semi hardwood cutting, some are hardwood cutting. Okay, herbaceous cutting when the plants are in tender state or succulent. Suppose it is of six months only. But when it is semi hardwood, so that will be six to one year in between. That is the age. But above one year, that is hardwood cutting. So depending upon the cuttings, concentration also varies. Whatever the growth regulator use, that concentration also varies. So nowadays in the market, some patented products are found. You might have heard Ceradix A, Ceradix B. If you ask to any, any soap, then I want indolbitric. The people will be surprised. They will not know what is this. But if you tell what is Ceradix A, Ceradix B, that is a trade product, trade name, containing IBA, okay? So they will give you. So that also when you get, could you follow that for I am telling? So that means in propagation of cutting, the IBA is used for quick rooting and the sprouting. So the concentration also varies depending upon the Growth regulator. 
if the growth regulator, growth regulator generally what is happen? You see, one milligram when dissolved in one liter of water, then it gives ppm. One ppm. Ppm is right down. Ppm means parts per million. Parts per million. When one milligram solid, when in case of solid, when one milligram dissolved in one liter of water, that will give one ppm. Suppose you want 200 ppm, so then 200 milligram to be dissolved in one liter of water. That will give 200 ppm. Mind that. But in case of liquid, it is one ml in one liter of water that gives 1000 ppm. So this is the calculation. How to calculate? What type of extra living? You want the ppm concentration. So this is the formula. 1 ml in 1 liter, it gives 1000 ppm. When in case of solid, when 1 milligram is dissolved in 1 liter, that gives 1 ppm. It depends upon, but 1 liter should be. Okay? So suppose 1000 ppm you want. 1000 milligram, that means 1 gram in 1 liter. That gives 1000 ppm. Now, that cuttings, how it is, how it is treated? Suppose you have made the cuttings, but how you can go for treatment? That is the point. You make the bundles. Suppose you are going to go for bougainvillea. You cut the cuttings, you make the cuttings, and make it bundles, then take a beaker. Take a beaker like this. This beaker, if the concentration is 10, 25, or 50 ppm, then put the cuttings here. Put the cuttings here for 18 to 24 hours. Write down. Depending on concentration, use of the cutting also varies. If the concentration is low, write down. If the concentration is low, say 10, 25, 50 ppm, you have to put the cuttings for 18 to 24 hours. Okay? Write down. You have to put the cuttings for 18 to 24 hours. If the concentration is high, say 500 to 2000 ppm, you have to put just a minute or even less than a minute and it take it out and plant it. Okay? If the concentration is higher, say 500 to 2000 ppm, then you have to put the cuttings for one minute or even less than one minute. Okay? That means you are dissolved, you are putting the cuttings in the solution. It depends upon the concentration of the solution used. Okay? Now, you might have come across about the term grafting and budding. Have you heard that? Yes. When in form of a bud, join with the roots of give rise a new individual that is called budding when the bud is thick along with the bud is joined with the roots of give rise new that is called grafting okay that is the two plants are united together okay the lower portion is called roots of upper portion is called scion now <coughs> suppose if you go for grafting grafting always her seedlings are raised in the nursery then when the seedlings will be one and a half, one and a half one hole, then at the 20 to 25 centimeter head, that grafting is made. So it is a V shape. That is called root stock. This is called root stock. R O O T S T O K. Root stock. And the whether in form of the bud or bud stick, when you join here. It should be of similar diameter, okay? Whenever we are, you are joined the, that is called scion, okay? So application of growth regulator in this united portion, it makes quick union, write down. Application of growth regulator, like IBA, NA, to the joining portion helps quick reunion. Helps quick union. Quick union. That means the joining of these two parts quickly happens. Okay? This coining what happens? There will be a 
connection of vascular and xylem and phloem with the stock and cyan vascular bundles. So there will be quick union and it will, the root stock will absorb moisture and nutrients and will supply to the top. And finally, top portion will be at the flowers and fruits. That is called cyan. And in case of <coughs> nursery plant, this is a nursery plant, these seedlings are coming up. Okay, these seedlings are coming up. In this tip, in this tip, tip of this seedling, if you apply GA3, then it gives vigorous growth. Right down. Application of this uh, GA3 to the tip of the nursery plant gives vigorous growth. So this is the sum of the areas where the growth regulator are used in respect of propagation of plants. Application of GA3, GA3 means GA3 to the, to the tip portion of the nursery plant, it gives the vigorous growth, gives the vigorous growth. Vigorous growth of the seedlings, okay? So this is the sum of the area. I, I, I told you in respect in, paper, in the propagation of plant by cutting, use of growth regulator as the external. A solution and which will give rise the roots and the sprouts very quickly. And also second time, the concentration also varies according to the cuttings. If the concentration is low, then putting the, uh, putting the cuttings will be more, that is 18 to 24, say 20, 10, 25, 50 ppm. If it is a higher concentration, you have to keep the cuttings only for, for a minute or even less than one. Then also in respect of propagation through budding and grafting, then for union of the cyan and the rootstock, application of growth regulator will help very quickly. Okay? And finally, application of GA3 to the tip portion of the seedlings, it gives a vigorous growth. So this is the sum of the area in propagation of plants. Mm. Next, control of flowering. Control of flowering actually it is an in case of you see pineapple. Pineapple does not flower at the same time. When you go for pineapple cultivation, it gives only 50 to 60 percent flowering. Rest flower, rest do not flower. That is the problem of pineapple cultivation in the country or not in the world even. So that's why to get the 80 percent flowering so the farmer can harvest at a time, that the application of growth regulatory is essential, important. Say, mm, Control of flowering. Ethereal. Ethereal, E T S R E L. Ethereal. It is a ethylene producing compound. Ethereal. Ethylene producing compound. So, this application, you can write down, no, the pineapple generally gives flowering in normal cultivation. Pineapple gives flowering 50 to 60 percent in the main season. Okay? 50 to 60 percent flowering, rest will not flower. And second, to get the 80 percent flowering, to application of growth regulators like ethereal, like ethereal, application of growth regulator like ethereal at 100 ppm, 100 ppm solution, that is 1 ml in 100 liter water. When you put 30 ml of this solution to the core of the plant, at least one month before flowering, then it gives 80 percent flowering. Write down. This solution when you made 100 ppm, if you take 30 ml and put in the core of the plant, that means top portion of the plant, okay, at least 30 days before flowering, then it gives 80 percent flowering. Okay. So that is the actually one of the uses of plant growth regulator. Could you follow? If you give 10 ml or 30 ml of this solution to the core of the, that means in the top portion of the plant, at least 30 days before flowering, and it gives 80% flowering. 
So next is. So if you that is the flowering can be regulated. You can write down regulation of flowering in pineapple is regulation flowering flowering in pineapple is possible by use of growth land growth regulators. So if you want to delay flowering, suppose I don't like to harvest the flowering and the some particular time that suppose I am not be I'll be going to Delhi for 10 to 15 days. So you can delay flowering. Okay? You can delay flowering. How it can be delayed? That is application of NA plan of X, which is called plan of X, right down. To delay flowering by 10 to 15 days, by 10 to 15 days, the application of application of NA. Or oh, it is called plano fix. Plano fix 300 ppm. That to be spray 60 to 70 days no, before normal harvest. Write down. Then you can delay it. Okay? You can delay it by 10 to 15 days by application of plano fix 300 ppm. Okay? That is to be applied 60 to 70 days before normal harvest. Suppose you want to harvest the pineapple early, that can be also regulated. Okay? If you want to harvest the, now I told you the normal harvest and the delay harvest and the earlier, if you want to harvest the fruits early, then you have to apply ethereal, right? Ethereal 500 ppm. That is one month before harvest. So that gives you. You can, you can harvest the fruit 10 to 15 days earlier than the normal period. Then actually, that's okay. Now time is only 10 minutes. I may take five, I, I mean, I'll try to complete this. Then regarding fruit setting and the parthenocarpy. As you know, parthenocarpy development of fruits without fertilization. Isn't it? So for that also, at the use of the plan go regulators like 24D, 245D, write down. 24D in the in respect of fruit setting and the parthenocarpy. Okay? Suppose there was no pollination due to adverse condition. Okay? That for fruit, uh, fruiting set, fruit setting can be possible by application of growth regulator, which is 24D. That is 25 ppm. Application of 25 ppm of 24D make possible. Fruit setting, okay. And generally, seedless fruits are reduced in size. Seedless fruits are reduced in size. So, by application of growth regulator, you can make a good size of fruits, okay. Then, parthenocarpy that is the development of without fertilization. Even suppose some with adverse uh, weather condition, suppose there are no pollination occurs, there are some adverse condition occurs. That also possible to develop the fruit by application of growth regulator. Write down. So if that there will be no, no fruit development due to lack of pollination and the adverse weather condition, that fruit setting is possible only through application of growth regulator like 24D, 245D. 24D means 24 dichlorophenoxy acetic acid. 24D. 24D means 24 dichloro, dichloro phenoxy acetic acid. Phenoxy acetic acid. And 24T, 24 5 t 24 5 trichloro phenoxy acid, acetic acid. So that actually concentrates on use 25 ppm. That to be spray. That to be spread to the plants before normal flowering. So down the food setting. And control of pre-harvest food drop. Control of pre-harvest, you know, farmers actually they raise the food tree and there will be some dropping of fruits. At a different stage of dropping of fruits occur. First, the dropping of fruits and the, there will be no fertilization. There will be no fertilization and that drop flowers are dropped down. Second, 
the fruitless which develop, there will be competition against the reserves. So those who fail, just like a survival of the fittest, those who fail, they will drop down. Okay? And there are, at certain stages, there are fruits will be of marble size, then also drop down. This is because of abscisson layer formation. Okay? And uh, finally, when fruits are going to be harvested within a soon, that type is a most dangerous and it is a great loss to the farmer. So that how we can control it. Okay? That is a very important point. So that to be controlled because when the fruits begin to develop, there will be some auxins. Auxins produced within the seed. And with the maturity of the seed, that auxin will be exhausted, which fail to retain the fruits with the stock, fruit stock. And there will be formation of abscisson layer, and fruits will drop down. Okay? So to retain the fruits, you have to apply externally some growth regulators. That is also 2,4-D. You write down. To control pre-harvest food drop, the phenomena I told you, so you can write your study. When the fruits begin to develop, <coughs> then gradually the auxins are gradually exhausted with the degree of maturity. Hmm? When the actually fruits fruit develop towards the maturity, then the auxin present in the seeds is gradually reduced. Could you, roll? Could you follow? That when the auxin reduce, then the fruits fail to retain along with the fruit stock. That's why it is necessary to apply at least three to seven days before earliest harvest. Two four D at twenty five ppm. That is the common phenomena generally farmers face. So that is actually that is uh, what I to control of fruit pre-harvest food drop is also possible by application control of pre is also possible by application of growth regulator 2,4-D 25 ppm at least 3 to 7 days before first picking picking means harvest so that will help to retain the fruits farmers can harvest then could you follow that? Control of fruits, you, can, you do not take it very seriously. You take it that control of fruits, sexually the auxin which is exhausted can be supplemented by application outside. That is to be sprayed to the plants at least three to seven days before first picking. So that's all actually. You need not worry about it. But thing is that science which, are, science which are, I am telling you that the auxin present in the seeds, it gradually reduces. So to supplement the auxins, from external, uh, external uh, application should be used. Okay? So this is the point. You only two or three sentences. Then the flower thinning. Another important point is flower thinning. Flower thinning actually it is also a modern trend in the commercial food production. Modern trend in commercial food production. Why? Suppose you might have seen the papaya. So many fruits are born. These are small size. You have to cut number of number of fruits to even a, for a meal, isn't it? So that's why it is necessary to thin some fruits so the remaining fruits will be of desirable size and it will be marketable, okay? Could you follow? Some fruits where there is a heavy bearing of fruits, fruits are of not good size, small size. So you have to remove something, some fruits. Otherwise all fruits will exhaust, will draw the nutrients from the plants, isn't it? So you have to remove it. But mechanically is not possible. So by application of some chemicals like phenols, cresols, dinitro compounds, write down. So by application of some growth regulators like phenols, PACNOL, cresols, CRESOL, dinitro compound, DINITRO, phenols. Hmm. Phenols, cresols, dinitro compound, dinitro compounds. These compounds can be used in thinning. 
so in this thinning actually application of these compounds to be applied before completion or before fertilization you have to make the fertilization is or embryo abortion only this two way you can make the fruits those you can remove this only this two way either you have to make the embryo abortion or you have to you do not allow to complete fertilization okay that is two way this two way you can write down either before complete fertilization or through embryo abortion that thinning is possible that thinning is only through before completion of fertilization or you to make the embryo abortion so that is the way then these compounds actually use depending upon the concentration type of crop to be spray type of crops and the concentration and also it depends upon the environmental condition like temperature and humidity okay application of these chemicals depends upon the concentration the composition and also it depends upon the environmental condition like temperature and humidity do you follow now finally weed control yeah, sometimes actually what happen you see some cuttings are there in propagation of cutting let me tell you, i am repeating actually in a grape if you go for cutting the grape there will be no rooting you can you can only see and wait and see there will be no rooting why because some substances are some substances are in the cuttings which never allow to go for rooting which do not allow that means do not produce roots okay in case of grape if you go for cutting there will be no rooting why because the grape there are some inhibitors presence inside the cuttings so that does not allow rooting but thing is this when you put the cuttings in the water and that inhibitor will go down to the roots it will go down to the roots and then will root so this actually there is somebody may ask somebody may ask you why some cuttings do not go for rooting either there is some lacking of some substance in the plant that cuttings or even some inhibitors present which never allowed cuttings if the some substance which i told you the photosynthesis oxygens and organic substance if there is cutting so there is no lacking or the sorry there is lacking so there will be no rooting and in case of grape also when there will be if you cut the also cutting they will not give you that is presence of some inhibitors i told you the inhibitor which retard or suppress the growth so but that inhibitors if you put in the water that will go down and then go for rooting so that is actually difficult to root so the concentration of the growth regulator is such that it should be specific suppose 200 ppm okay if you make slightly more than the 200 ppm there will be no rooting there will be no bud formation rather it will create gross morphological abnormalities so concentration should be very specific that's why it should be it should be correctly weighed in chemical measures and to be dissolved in water correct solution to be you have to wear the clean glasses okay some chemicals are there which do not dissolve in water so they dissolve in alcohol you have to dissolve first in alcohol then to make the volume to be make up with the help of water distilled water now regarding weed control weed control also growth regulator helps in weed control because weed is a crop which is of negative value is a crop which is of out of place okay because when you go for manual weeding then it will takes time or why it will not be economic so that's why some even from in form of growth regulator some weedicides are used those are mm. you write down weedicides mm. as a weedicide 
the practice is called weeding. So the some of the weeds I like to for D. Okay. Two four D, then dalapon, gamexin, gamexin double M, gamexin. Okay. Then some dalapon, MCPA. Like this, these are the some of the weedy side. It is used in 0.1% concentration. 0.1% concentration. So these we decide, growth regulator when you use it, it depends upon a concentration. Okay? If it is lower concentration, it will act as a hormones. But if it is more than the higher concentration, it will act as a we decide. So that's why the 240 even can be used as a we decide. But concentration is 0.1%. Okay? So that is why the Concentration is very important. And moreover, these weed side do not have any side effect. It does not put any bad effect to the ecosystem. Okay? And they are selective also in controlling all the weeds. And they do not put any, just like we tell us some pollution of this by, but the weed side, this type of chemical will not create any bad effect. Okay? Neither to the soil, no to the plant or to the humans or the animals.